Well, it's hard day, Knir Khan. Good afternoon. Um, as Martin mentioned, my name is John Yarwood. I'm with the UDHC and the Executive Vice President of Legal and Advocacy. Um, who is the UDHC, you might ask? We are, uh-oh. All right. We're a group of former Maker Foundation um, executives and advisors who now use the knowledge we gained and experience we gained uh, bootstrapping the MakerDAO protocol and dissolving and decentralizing um, the protocol after dissolving the foundation to fund and strategically support new projects who are building things to combine DeFi and traditional finance into what we believe will usher in new finance. So before we talk about decentralization, we kind of have to come to a common understanding of what that means, right? There are a lot of things you can say, decentralization, and there's a huge umbrella that many projects fall under that word. So what we say is the system is decentralized if it is fault and attack resistant with a remote likelihood of collusion or creating a common point of control and with a sufficient number of diverse and independent contributors, political actors, and social influencers or community members operating the system's logic. And when we analyze a project or a platform or an app, when we think about a decentralization, we tend to look at this arc of decentralization for its development. It starts here with founders or a founding team. They're in control. They're maintaining that control. As they build and need to bootstrap, they seek funding, whether that's publicly or privately, and they cede a little of that control over to those funders. And then as they build their projects and their communities, they build in such a way where they can hand over the workforce and the control of that project to the community itself, landing in the spot of optimal decentralization. As we stand here today, there's a couple questions I think I want to go through and answer with you. First, is NEAR a decentralized protocol right now? Second, how will the NEAR ecosystem maintain a decentralized ethos as BOSS is increasingly used to expand the NEAR ecosystem? And then as we answer those questions, we also need to think about at the same time when, not if, NEAR reaches an inflection point, what may follow? What exogenous pressures may come to the ecosystem as NEAR scales and reaches that inflection point? So today, we're pretty close to busting out towards that inflection point as we speak. Over the last few months, um, eight to 10 months, certainly after the FTX collapse, the daily user accounts, the, um, excuse me one second, daily active addresses, new addresses, and smart contracts have grown at a steady pace. So has the growth in transaction volume and the number of validators have increased on near. And over the last quarter, specifically, these have jumped leaps and bounds, right? Shout out to Kai Kai now for helping with that. But as that happens, you're going to see there are increased security attacks, increased pressure on the system, and then also more legal and regulatory scrutiny of the ecosystem as it grows. And considering how much near social growth and widget development has happened since BOSS was introduced in March, that will happen soon. So when we analyze something at the UDHC, we like to think of it as the four attributes framework. We look at the structure, number of tokens, computers, addresses, clients, control, the number of people that actually control that structure, the influence, the number of people, whether directly or indirectly, influencing that control, and then the number of processes and functions the protocol has. And the overarching objective of this decentralization, we believe, is user, autonom user autonomy or self-sovereignty. So we look at the near tech stack right now, right? Let's go to the front end layer. The front end layer, we rate the structure at a four, and a four out of five. There's multiple independent front ends that access the protocol. I've heard thousands thrown around this week, right? Control, access by open source and proprietary front ends. Influence, community and user base uh, influences the direction of development and accessibility. And then process, uh, the process exposes protocol functionality with added features. 
Smart contract layer. Five out of five on structure. Great job. Smart contract layer is open and versatile enough to create any protocol or DAP. Control. It's an open and upgradable smart contracts, four out of five. Influence. Smart contract layer is primarily influenced by near foundation alongside the community. It is not influenced by public policy or regulation necessarily at the moment. Process. The smart contract layer is available for protocol and DAP development to all. Continue, the data layer. Structure, this is where we start to run into a little less decentralization, right? The data layer, some data is stored off chain with compressed data secured on chain. Control, it's a three out of five. Most state data is readily accessible with on chain data being immutable. Influence, the data layer design balances security with performance at the moment and accessible, it's accessible under pseudo anonymity for autonomous use and process. All data layer processing on chain and secured on chain. When we get to the settlement layer, you're going to see a drop off. And that's understood at this point in time where the near, near protocol is, if you remember that arc of decentralization I mentioned. So for structure, it's significant ge geographical distribution and there's an implied independence among validators. However, when you get to control right now, there's a low number of validators. A higher control with a single sequencer and near concentration. Influence. Node profit right now is balanced with security as the protocol is still developing an arc of decentralization. It's not a completely open incentivization system yet for nodes and validators. Process. Getting a little better, better. It's versatile, but it's still decentralizing, so not yet ready for a full ecosystem. Now, then we like to look at the softer points, right? And this is more human or entity control uh, and um, participation on the, the protocol. So when we're looking at user autonomy or self-sovereignty, first of all, we believe that a neutral infrastructure is at the heart of that. We look at a political aspect, is the community has the decision-making power and influence to create policy. Administrative, its community is responsible for planning, financing, and management. And economic, is a community responsible for generating revenue and controlling expenditures? Right now, politically, the decision and policy making is publicly accessible. You all know what's happening. However, it's particularly focused by the near foundation, but near governance is coming online, like the NDC, right? Had their first vote just this past quarter. It's a milestone that can't be ignored. Administratively, NIR is developing a diverse community, contributing towards establishing new operational functionality. You have DevHub, you have the NIR development suite of tools, the BigQuery public data set, and you have the success of KaiKai Kai Now as an example of this administrative decentralization, right? Economic, the community has some influence or say over revenue or expenditure. We now have the marketing DAO, the development hub, who we just heard from, and creatives DAO, who all have budgets and a grant system to help decentralize economically the protocol. But then lastly, the UDHC likes to look at the tokenomics of a protocol, if there are any at the moment. With NIR, there was an initial sale, sold through an ICO in April of 2018, which helped fund the foundation and the protocol itself. But that's pretty centralized, right? Use cases, however, the token itself is a utility token that's used for staking, gas, and governance. So we're seeing some utility in the token. It's not purely speculative. And then there are no rights and values. It doesn't act like a stock certificate, right? You don't have rights to any revenue. You don't have any attributable value coming forth from the operation of the protocol to token holders. So maybe it's a little bit more decentralized than that ICO comment would necessarily indicate. And so NIR's arc of decentralization started off blank. There was pretty much tight control within the NIR Foundation as it um, built the protocol and then into its ICO. It had the funding. You see that, that point there is close to funding, still close to control, not anywhere near community and decentralization. And as we see now at current point, it's moving towards that community and that optimal decentralization sphere. 
So we can probably say that the near blockchain is arguably a public good or rather infrastructure if you prefer that term. However, despite the leaps and bounds and development over the last eight months, there are some areas for growth and progress. And that's going to become very important as the regula regulatory spotlight begins shining on the near ecosystem. So the regulatory touch points that most people focus on, and we agree with as well, are front ends, on and off ramps, centralized and quasi-centralized financial applications, and DAO wrappers, you know, if you create an entity to encircle a DAO to give it legal personhood, or even voters, if any of you follow US uh, litigation in UKIDAO, the CFTC went directly after the voters themselves, but that was a particularized case with some nuance. But again, back to this inflection point, questions will begin to be asked of the corporate structure, development, implementation, and funding like we've just covered, but will also be asked about regulatory interoperability, which we'll cover in just a few minutes. So now that we've talked about NEAR's decentralization, let's talk about moving into the future with BOSS. As you all know, BOSS was launched in March with six pillars fast author authorization, development enablement, universal search, gateways, content moderation, and near tasks. With BOSS comes three wonderful attributes that I think are being pushed heavily this week, rightly so. Interoperability, democratized development, and open access and control. For interoperability, we have to worry about a few things though. First of all, as you work across the, you know, digitalized ledger environment and you become interoperable and cross-chain, you tend to inherit the traits of the many change you're working on as you build an app or a project. Because of that, we have to consider when building in BOSS, are we going to establish a minimum set of standards that will require when you build and when you move across chains? Or will we have, you know, um, fall to the lowest common denominator? If we want to in in enforce those minimum standards, will we do that through BOSS? Can we build it into the modules themselves? Can we do it through the community? How will we do that? Then we also, not only do we inherit traits, we increase the amount of vulnerabilities that the ecosystem may be subject to. So if you have a vulnerability on another chain or an L2, what does that mean for what's being built here on NIR? And will that vulnerability bleed over? And if it does, that means any exploitation of that vulnerability will ripper, ripple through the ecosystem. And if it does, how will we know? So maybe near governance, the NIR governance community needs to set up a monitoring tool or an information repository where people can understand what these vulnerabilities are and how to build around them. Then, lastly, as I said, we'd, we'd get to regulatory interoperability. Jurisdictionally, it's a global blockchain, right? So you're going to have to work across the world with different regulators and have to consider all of the regulations that you're subject to. Then, regulatory regimes. DeFi, blockchain, crypto, we like to remove intermediaries, right? And we work without silos. Well, the traditional finance world works with intermediaries and silos, which means securities and um, commodities don't mix together, right? They're kept separate. Lending and payments are kept separate. That's not the same here. So what are you subject to if you build something that combines those functions, right? Does that mean you have to answer the SEC and the CFTC in the US? Does that mean you have to answer to the FSA in the UK? and also the EU or the French authorities or the Portuguese authorities, and how do you build for that? Then, I'm going to move through these very quickly. Democratize development. It's a great attribute. Can we encode decentralization into democratized development with BOSS, similar to building um, standards into modules? Can we make sure open source is enshrined in, in the BOSS ecosystem? And how do we do that? It's admittedly difficult if it's a truly open development environment. People can build 
with open source code, but they can close some of it off too because it's open. And then variable control and user autonomy is built into democratized development. However, the nature of BOSS means that it is, that it is built in a decentralized manner and vari with variable control, but it also means that developers can build centralized apps and platforms. Can the community influence this socially or economically through near tasks or other elements? Lastly, access and control. Current access points, the Near Foundation primarily controls fast auth at the moment, but others are building and hopefully will open up those access points. The BOSS system and Near governance, how can that interact together? How can these four new DAOs come together and affect the BOSS ecosystem? And then lastly, will BOSS and will Near tolerate centralized development through BOSS? And if not, how will the community come together to enforce that principle? It's a little bit um, uh, philosophical, but it's something the community needs to, to grapple with soon. Anyway, thank you. I know it was quick. If you want to analyze your own project or your own build, we have isitdecentralized.app, which is a series of questions that leads you through this analysis and will give you a number score at the end of it, uh, and you can use as you build. So then lastly, I just want to say, you know, while the blockchain seems to be nearly decentralized. Please keep all the foregoing in mind as the near community leads the world into the open web like a boss. Thank you. <laughs>